very um, uh, El Pizarro to me. Yeah. And you did a fine job. Thank you. Uh, good morning yet again. Uh, please repeat after me. God is good. God, God is good. good. All the time. All, All the time. 24-7. 24-7. 366. 366. This month we have been taking a conscious and purposeful vacation from those ideas, those beliefs, those behaviors that have kept us stuck right where we are. Stuck in negativity, stuck in lack, stuck that does not let us move forward in joy in where we want to be. So we have taken a vacation from judgment. We've taken a vacation from scarcity thinking. Remember, if we're thinking scarcity, we are living in scare city. I love that idea. And we were moving to Bounty County. And then last week, we were taking a vacation from stress. And I gave two very deep, 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 deep spiritual principles. And one was laugh loudly, and the other was enjoy life. So who knew those were deep, such deep spiritual principles? And this wraps up our week, and we are this morning taking a vacation from negativity. We want to accentuate the positive, eliminate the negative, and we are never going to mess with Mr. In-Between. And so we do have a very special Sunday. We're going to have a little performance, because what better, sometimes I'm yammering up here, and you know I love to yammer. And um, you do it well. I do. <laughs> you know, after a few minutes, I'm just in the groove, and I'm really just oozing with spirit. And because, and the other thing is, because I also uh, am uh, looking forward to the reminders. You know, I also I listen. Luckily, I mean, very luckily for me, I listen to what I have to say. And so through the week, it's like, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, I remember. Oh yeah, I just talked about that. Oh yeah. So, but sometimes, you know, wouldn't it be nice to break things up a little bit? And we're going to do just that. We're going to actually give you a visual demonstration. And this is based on a book. So we're going to have, um, we're going to take a vacation from negativity this morning. And based on a book called Your Aladdin's Lamp, uh, written by Dr. Bill Hornaday. And I think we have someone in the audience who's actually seen Dr. Hornaday in person. Is that true? Way back here? Betty? Mm -hmm. Betty? Betty? Just say. <laughs> Didn't you used to go to Founders Church with Dr. Hornaday? I sure did. She sure did. And here's what she told me. The first time that she walked into that church, it's like she knew what love was. That he exuded this sense of love. Correct? Correct. Correct, Amundo. And she has never left this philosophy, this teaching, which gives so much, which allows us to live and, and emanate from this place of love. Well, anyway, this book, Your Aladdin's Lamp, was written by Dr. Bill Hornaday, and it talks about different clients that he's had through the years. And so we're going to be viewing Dr. Hornaday and one of his clients, a Julius Podholes, who had the most serious case of negative thinking that anyone has ever encountered. And so I would like to bring up the actors in our Reader's Theater right now. to let you talk to him for five minutes. The note was from one of the professional practitioners, and this is what it said. Dear Dr. Bill, this will introduce Julius Potholz, the most alarming case of negative thinking I've ever encountered. He's like an accident going somewhere to happen. I simply couldn't get through to him, but now he has agreed to spend five minutes talking with you. Do what you can. He needs help. Hey, Doc, this crazy Dan gave me this here five bucks to listen to you for five minutes. Okay, start talking. 
Wait a minute. Are you a hat shrinker? Tell me, Julius, when did you leave Brooklyn? Aha! Smart Joe. Notice my accent, huh? Yeah, well, I left one whole terrible year ago, Doc. I was out of my mind. Out of the frying pan into the fire. That's me. Any dimwit would have known. Not potholes. Things aren't going well? Things stink, Doc. How did you happen to come west? Sunshine! Ha <laughs> ha, yeah. Sarah, my wife, she talks up California sunshine. <laughs> you ever see the sun through the smog, Doc? Right away, I get asthma. I can't smoke. I gain 18 pounds, headaches, and I feel sick. But the kids, well, they get big California appetites, eat like monsters. You know how many meals I gotta provide? 18 a day. In a week, it's 89. In a month, it's 272. In a year, it's astronomical. And me, get nickel tips, brother. Ah, for the noise and stink and freezing cold and sweat and heat of Brooklyn. But I'm stuck now. You know what was in back of it? Sarah figured it out. Yeah, she figured she primed me out of them Saturday crap games the first day I win if I ever did. And I did, by accident. California sunshine, she says, and out we come. Those chopper musses eating hamburgers like locusts across all them states and deserts. Looking for sunshine, see? And laying in the thick black smog. It's Pa, it, that's me, that's Pa Holtz. How old are you, Julius? Well, I'm young and I look, Doc, but I age lately. Nothing ages a hacker like a nickel tip. How do you earn a nickel tip? Yeah, you got the right way, Doc. I sure earned it. You know what I've done? I carried grocery stacks up three flights of rickety stairs for a little old lady, and she gave me five cents and pennies yet. That's the bottom of a long, lousy downhill slide. Come on, docs. Start yakking. I'm holding still for it. Five bucks for five minutes the lady gave me. First big tip in the Golden State. Hey, wait a minute. What kind of a racket is this anyhow? At the moment, I'm doing research for a book. Tell me, have you got a good cab? Me? A good cab? Doc, you never saw anybody get so many lemons. I get lemons all the time. I had a tire blowout when I wasn't even sitting in it. I'm on a stool having coffee. Now, another time, I'm parked at a hash house seat, having lunch, and guess what? A juvenile skids around the corner and bashes my fender flat. How was that for terrible? Once on a freeway at night, my gas tank sprang a leak for no reason. But I didn't find out until I was in the country. And my fare was a fat, gimpy guy with a sprained ankle late for his appointment. And I had to almost carry him a mile. And that brought on rain. Boy, he had a big bleeding heart like everybody else out here. He tips me two bits and then digs around and adds another nickel. 35 cents, big deal. Tell me more about Sarah. Sarah? <laughs> She's got a thing, Doc. She's trying for coaching, you see. Uh, like yesterday, in a bus, she finds this magazine somebody threw away. Gourmet. Only it's spelled with a T, but you say gourmet. This is hot stuff. Me getting nipple tips, so now she wants to cook with butter. And she, and serve hors d'oeuvres. Imagine that monsters eating hors d'oeuvres. Life's been using you pretty hard, has it? Hey, now look, Doc. Life don't use me no harder than anybody else. Life stinks, it's hell. How does Sarah feel about it? Huh? How should she feel? She's one of them dogs that keep choking back the tears. I like it better when they bust right out and cry. Do you love her? Does she love you? Huh? Did you love each other when you were married? Hey, what is this racket? Uh, is this one of their marriage consultations? How would you like to make another five bucks? Doing what, Doc? Research. Yeah? 
This is going to be a paper chaser. Where's next? I want you to try an experiment, Julius. Whether it works or not, I'll give you $5 this time Friday. Yeah? Experiment with what? Your attitude of mind. Attitude? This is the Institute of Religious Science. We have a theory which has proved out consistently for almost 40 years. We believe that every man, including Julius Budholz, has within him something which can be used to change everything he dislikes in his own life. There's a technique. Everything in life responds to our attitudes, our ideas. If you think people are unappreciative, they will be. If you expect a bad day, you'll have one. If your mind is grudgingly fixed on small tips, small tips you'll get, or none. Your service is rendered only for money you will miss out entirely. Now then, your present attitude has brought you nickel tips. You admit it. It has given you a shabby cab, a soiled jacket, hard luck, and a cab that breaks down. If I show you the technique, tell you exactly how to do this, will you reverse your attitude, sweat out the affirmative, and report to me on Friday? Revoice my attitude. Flip it over. You view everything through the glass darkly. Are you so stubborn you'd insist this is the only way to look at life? Sweat out the affirmative. It won't be easy. You'll earn your $5. If you manage to be consistent between now and Friday, you'll have to climb out of that hell you say you're in. Yeah? A self-centered hell, the only kind there is. Are you capable of discipline? You'll have to watch every thought, every word you say, and you'll substitute love for hate. Willing to try it, or do you think you're too far gone? What comes first, pal? First courtesy, which is one aspect of love. You may not have tried it lately. When a fair hails you, greet him cheerfully. Get out and open the door. Get out and open the door. Exactly, and smile. If you think you can crack that frozen face of yours, allow no negativity past your lips. Nobody sees the whole truth, Julius. There are as many viewpoints as there are people. But you have a choice until Friday you're to take the bright side. So it's a kind of a gimmick, huh? It's like the switch on a TV set. Try it. You might possibly tune in. So uh, then what? You'll succeed if you clarify your motives. Think it out first. Let's have a policy for the cab. Every successful business operates on a policy. It may help you if you pretend that you are taking the cab. No matter what the provocation, treat the customer as you'd like to be treated. Oh, I get it. The old hogwash, huh? Don't kid me, Doc. I went to Temple a few times. What hoits you, don't do to the other guy. That's nothing but the old time Jewish religion. They talk the same junk to the kids. That's old stuff that goes way back. Ever tried it? It ain't practical in the cab business. I think it is. That's my point. Five dollars for a good hard try. Anybody make you a better offer lately? You've got a little bitty office for such a cheerful guy with such big ideas. One day you'll find me in a bigger one with a glass wall and a garden outside. Yeah? At the moment it's an idea. But that's where everything starts. My idea will become concrete block and glass eventually with the help of a few thousand people who also hold the vision of a beautiful new church. Yeah? Listen, Julius, if it goes no further than this, understand this much. You have yourself for a friend. That you know for sure. What kind of friend are you being to yourself when every thought in your mind is destructive. Want to ride with smiley potholes, pal? <laughs> yeah. It had been a long time since Julius had caught such a laugh. A slow grin showed his big, even teeth. A long, dormant humor stirred within him. He salute, his salute placed him as a one-time GI, and he went out chuckling. And that was that. The 
phone rang. Sermons to write, broadcasts to outline, people to see. Bill forgot all about Julia's Bibles. The following Friday morning, Bill was writing a sermon in his office when a hat sailed past him and landed on the floor near his desk. It was a worn batter, but was somehow jaunty. Julia's potholes, grinning from ear to ear, came in to retrieve it. Here your five bucks, Doc. Brother, it's your voice. Things are all right now? Huh. Well, yeah. Everything but Sarah. Everything else is terrific. What's wrong with Sarah? Ah, no communications. She's got it in her head I've been shooting crap, see? Look, you know what I made for my self-take-home pay since I seen you? One hundred and forty-six bucks. Hey, you need any dough, Doc. What happened, Julius? Miracles! I mean, for a while, I think it's a, you know what you'd say, a coincidence. And pretty soon, it can't be, Doc. It's impossible. It'll give you the chills. You know the first guy I got when I left here? Listen. I groups over to the Chapman Park Hotel, see? And there's an old guy waiting and no cabs. He's a sad-faced, gray-haired, tired fellow. I jumped out and opened the door. He seemed surprised. Why, thank you, he says. He wants to go to the airport. So I begin telling him how great the freeways are. This reversed what I always said about them, see? Like you said, and the more I talk, the better they began to look. More convenient, like, and faster. And then I think of all the troubles that engineers went to. Mowing down houses, getting quick claims, all our legal stuff. Man, I notice there's a kind of warm silence in the back seat. And when I look in the rear view, this old guy smiles like somebody's made love to him. You know what? It turns out He's on the Highway Commission, Sacramento, and he never heard no kind word about highways for 15, 20 years. Well, now he's got 55 minutes before his plane, and he says, hey, how about lunch? He wants the report from a hacker, see? Out of the horse's mouth, so to speak. So, he don't care how I look, see? And he takes me to this swell airport joint for chow, I keep pumping up good ideas about the freeways, compliments, see, and I feel it, I get kind of drunk on it. And he takes notes in a little book. He follows me all the way to the door. We shake hands, and he gives me a $20 bill fare, plus about $13, $14 tip. I begin to shake all over. I'm stunned, see? My cab, now my cab is parked in a lot, and I go reeling over there, and here is a horn rim egghead with four suitcases, wants to go to Caltech in Pasadena. So we start. Now he asks how things are around here, and I tell him, well, it couldn't be better. I reverse everything about LFC. He talks smog, I talk blue skies, he talks crowded freeways, I talk speed. He gets to be like a game, you know, it gets to be like a game. He's watching the media, and he asks, Hey, how's tips? Well, I tell him, tips is fantastic. Last guy gave me 10 bucks. I tell him, well, you know, because I didn't want him to believe it was 13, 14. Well, he don't want to be a piker, and when we get to Caltech, he shells out the fare, which is plenty, and then adds three silver dollars. Hey, he's been to Las Vegas. How's that for wonderful? Now, next, I go to the Green Hotel. Four cabs in line, but right away, a convention comes out, and I get a happy drunk, wants to go to the Coliseum. He's happy, placid, seeing and loaded with dough. I give him the business, and by now I'm singing like a canary on a sunny morning, and oh, well, that's the way it's been. Couldn't be better except for Sarah. Didn't you tell her about this? Hey, Doc, how can I? I come in whistling, and she says, look out, kids. He's drunk, and I'm sober as an owl. It makes me sore. Then I sell out some dough on the table for her to buy herself a breeze raincoat she's always wanted, and she says, I've been shooting craps again. Doc, my blood begins to boil. I can look on the bright side away from Sarah, but at home, brother. Sarah and me got no communication. By now, I froze up. 
and she froze up. I go out of the house barns, cat dancing and singing to get into the mood, you know, and she thinks I got plastered doing breakfast. She can't see her. But I must have, she thinks. That's her attitude. 100% negative. I want you to call her up, Doc. Tell her it wasn't no crap game. Tell her it's just this old Jewish philosophy, you know, off the date. When did you last take Sarah out to dinner? Out to dinner? You mean what? Like uh, Chinese food? Take her alone without the kids. I recommend it. And when the candles are lit and you've ordered her favorite dinner, tell her all about this. Tell her the truth. She ain't speaking to me. Now you're being negative. Well, I'm speaking. She ain't. I never knew a woman who didn't like to go out to dinner. No dishes, no planning. I don't know, Doc. I, I tried explaining this affirmative stuff to my best buddy at the garage, and he thinks I'm nuts. Sarah will listen. You already let your example show what's happened. She must secretly be puzzled. You reversed your thinking outside. It will work at home, too, Julius. It works everywhere. It does, huh? Yeah. Well, you mean polite the whole bit. Hold out her chair and all. Okay. I'm going to try it tonight. Mrs. Julius Potholes was in the line at the Wilton Theater when Bill stood out front shaking hands after the service on Sunday. Her accent matched Julius's cadence for cadence. She was a perky little woman. <gasps> see what I'm wearing? It's, it's reversible, see? Reversible? Yeah. Like Julius Potholes, right? And Doctor, it's like I had two husbands. See, it's a with the best one on the inside, yeah. And now it's like Julius Paulos is like turned inside out, like before he was married. You know what I'm saying? It's a miracle. <laughs> I mean, it takes me. He takes me to Chantusa's cafe, and at first he sounds a little crazy, you know, talking about a law that we didn't know that existed, and about how being polite is part of love, and and brings good reactions and all that. You know, pretty soon I got believing him. And and he's kind of like shining. <laughs> he says it's been working at home and because, look at us. I mean, look at us talking. He wants I should read up on philosophy and tell him more about it. And, and Julius ain't what you call a fast reader. <laughs> Why don't you two come and see me? But I want to warn you, the rest of the way might not be easy. It's a curious fact when each discovers in his own fashion the coincidences, the answers to prayer, they come tumbling over one another in the beginning. And then, once you're thoroughly convinced, suddenly there's work to do, and dry periods too, until sometimes, like the monk with aching knees, the most devout find themselves saying, I believe, help thou my unbelief. Oh, that's okay with me. We never had it easy. Used to be I could be just bust down and cry, and Julius changed so since we got married, but now, now, I found he's reversible. <laughs> and so am I. I now got hope. Doc, I got hope. Yeah. The end. <laughs> We're reversible, aren't we? So we can take this case, how many times do we think what Dr. Bill Hornaday had mentioned, that it's early, easy on, when we begin to make these small changes. It might seem that we're demonstrating, we get quick results, we get those parking spots. Things seem to be turning around for us. And then what happens, we get some maturity within this thing called new thought. We take classes, and it becomes what we're going to consider old hat. And then, maybe our demonstrations don't happen as quick. And then we give up. We, we, we may revert to our old time negative thinking. We revert to those old patterns. And so, let's take a permanent vacation, not only from judgment, from stress, from scarcity. We can take a permanent vacation from negativity. By focusing, it's all about focus, it's about beliefs, it's about attitude, it's about Never wavering, never wavering, never doubting for one moment that there is a power for good in the universe, that there is only one thing, 
only one thing, and that one thing is God. That one thing is infinite. That one thing is love and light and joy. That one thing is abundance and opulence. That one thing is in as in us and as us, it is us. And when we remember that, when we never waver from these ideas, we can be like that Julius Potholes. We can reinvent ourselves. We can reverse our patterns. No matter what challenges that we might be going through, it is all reversible because the nature of life is love. The nature of life is joy and expansion and success. The nature of life is wholeness and community and unity. The nature of life is to be part of the whole. And so that is my desire and all of us up here to just reverse our thinking and move forward confidently, joyfully, in living that life that we were meant to live. And so it is. So, so.